Hey everyone, uh, this is going to be the Lebius Woods Illustrator part of the tutorial. Uh, to begin, I'm going to go ahead and do file, open, and open the line work that we just exported from uh, Rhino, which should be right here. Is it this one? I think so. Yes, it was. Uh, so I'm going to be using a reference image. So before I even do anything in, in uh, my Illustrator workspace, I'm going to create a new layer uh, and drag it to the bottom and call it reference image. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, his uh, enter the quake uh, drawing over to Illustrator. Uh, this might get kind of complex uh, as far as line work is concerned. So let's go ahead and make it a smaller file size, maybe like uh, uh, 18 by 12 or something like that. I think that'll be a good proportion. And uh, let's go ahead and start to uh, look at what's happening in this drawing. So he has this kind of base image at which point he has like this kind of floating parchment guy and he starts to kind of tile in these pieces of, of scenery. So I'm actually going to do it in the same way where I'm going to hide everything uh, except for the reference image, which I need to drag down to this layer. And, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and start constructing some of that. So if I'm on the reference image layer, I'm going to go ahead and hit my rectangle tool and do something that's a little bit bigger than the workspace. And what that's going to allow me to do is hit the eyedropper tool uh, and literally click on the color that's going on uh, in the background of this thing. So we'll say uh, this is actually we'll put it on a new layer called uh, background one. Uh, and then it looks like we have one, two, maybe three layers of background stuff that we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and make two more layers. Background two, background three. Sweet. Uh, so that one should be good. We're going to go ahead and lock that. I'm literally going to go to Google and look up uh, parchment paper, texture. And uh, I'm going to go to images, tools. I'm going to get the largest file size that I can. Uh, and I think that this is pretty nice looking, except it has a watermark on it. So let's look for another one. That one also has a watermark on it. Uh, you can spend the time to kind of Photoshop that stuff out, but I don't really care to. Uh, I think this one looks pretty good. It's a pretty good size as well. We'll go ahead and uh, uh, save that image as parchment one. And uh, while we're here, no, I think we should only need one parchment paper thing. Uh, so we're going to put that on background two by going to file place uh, and then uh, just placing that image that we just downloaded. And uh, you'll notice that it's absolutely huge, which is good. And we're going to go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees by, uh, was it 90 degrees? Yeah. By holding down shift and click dragging the corners. And we're going to make it a little bit more manageable, something like maybe this. Uh, and we can even start to uh, play with it up here if we want it to be really precise. Uh, so our workspace is what, 18 by 12. So let's just make this unlocked. Let's make it uh, 14 by eight. Um, actually, I don't like the look of that. Let's make it uh, 16 by uh, 10. And then we'll kind of center it on the page. All right, so once we have this centered on our page, what we're going to do is go to effect uh, stylized drop shadow. Uh, and what we're going to do is basically try to mimic what was going on over here, but it gives it a pretty nice sense of depth, I think. Uh, if we go to the Y offset and we start to adjust that, uh, we can start to bring it down a little bit further like this. We can even bring it a little bit further to the right like this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And that's going to get us a pretty similar effect to what's going on over here. Um, I think that this might be a little bit uh, too in your face. So if I click on it and go to links, uh, I can actually open up the file location and uh, open it up in Photoshop. And all we're going to do uh, is desaturate it so that it's not quite as aggressive and in your face. And then once we save it, uh, it'll automatically update it uh, back in Illustrator. So uh, I didn't have Photoshop opened because I'm an absolute rookie uh, and I should have planned this ahead, but I didn't. Uh, so I may fast forward here if it takes too long to load. Uh, it does not take too long to load. So I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, File once it lets me click on it. Okay, actually we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and hit Control-U or Image Adjustments uh, Hue and Saturation. 
And what that's going to allow me to do is drag this middle bar that says saturation down and we start to see uh, that, you know, where it was right here, uh, we can start to make it a little bit more toned down and then simply file save. Hit OK. And once we get back into Illustrator, it's going to ask us, do you want us to update stuff? You're going to say yes. Uh, and I think that looks a lot better. Uh, so from here, what we're going to do is uh, bring in a sky background as well. So now that uh, these things are good to go, uh, the, the, the parchment and the shadow, we're going to go ahead and lock this. We're going to make a third background layer uh, called sky. Actually, uh, we'll just say background three and then note that it's the sky. And we're going to go to Google, our trusty friend yet again, look up sky. Go to images, tools size, large, and uh, it might be nice to actually find a uh, kind of beach setting like this. So let's say sky over beach. And uh, we'll pick out one that speaks to us emotionally. Uh, and I think I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this one if it's not watermarked, which it is, son of a gun. Uh, let's go keep searching real quick. Uh, and I think that we're not getting exactly what we want. Uh, that one also has a watermark on it, and this is this is absolute garbage. Uh, I don't like this one. I like I like all the ones that are watermarked. I guess that's how they get you. This one this one will do just fine actually. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and and save this image, name it Sky, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're on the background three sky layer. Hit it File Place, and uh, we'll go ahead and drop that bad boy in. So this can be a similar thing where if we want to desaturate that, we can do it in uh, in Photoshop. And I think I'm probably going to because it's pretty aggressively blue. Uh, but basically I can shift and drag the corner to scale it proportionally. Uh, and I am gonna go ahead and open that up in Photoshop just to make it a little bit desaturated to match the rest of what we've got going on. Hit Control U and desaturate that son of a gun, uh, something like that. And then I can also go to uh, image adjustments, brightness and contrast. And then while it's still desaturated, we can still kind of play with kind of the washed outness of it by adjusting some of these factors. And I'll go ahead and save that. And again, it'll update it in, in Illustrator like that. So uh, you'll notice that's not really the end of, of what Lebius Woods do. We might, does, sorry. Uh, we might actually add uh, some of these kind of textural things that he has going on top of uh, pretty much everything in the drawing, uh, but we'll do that at a later point in the video. For right now, we wanna make sure that we get kind of these creases, and the way we're gonna do that is by going to the rectangle tool, clicking and dragging to the edges of both boundaries. Uh, up here, we wanna make our stroke maybe like five or something like that, and we're gonna make the fill uh, transparent. And what we can do now is go to uh, effect, blur, uh, Gaussian blur, and we'll just say, I think five pixels probably works pretty well and hit okay. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger, maybe something like that. Uh, and if we go to object, arrange, send to back, you'll notice that that's gonna go behind our beach painting uh, and we start to get a little bit more of the depth that Lebius Woods has in his thing. So I actually might make this like five point font. Uh, and this is something that you can kind of play around with until it looks right to you or even play around with the opacity. Let's make it 75. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is lock that layer as well, and we are going to uh, unhide all of those layers that we hid before. Uh, so this is our uh, structure. What I'm gonna do is basically drag it uh, so it fills up most of the composition, something, something like this maybe. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make the stroke 0, 0, 0, and change it to like 0.5. And uh, we can see that our line work is, is still there. Uh, so the next thing that we want to do is go to our Layers tab and make a new layer and call it, uh, let's say, uh, Render Underlay. And we're going to go ahead and do File Place, the render that we did in the first part of the tutorial. Uh, if I can find it. Let's go to Quick Access. Uh, Lebius render. I did a render, didn't I? Woods render, yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna, again, I'm going to kind of do that alignment thing that I spoke about in the first part of the video. We know that uh, this right edge is going to line up because, or actually it's not going to line up. So insert foot and mouth. Basically, we want to make sure that it's aligned uh, to the left and right sides of the page. 
And again, I'm zooming in and out very quickly by using Control plus and Control minus. That's pretty close. We just need to make it a little bit bigger, like so. And uh, by hitting the directional arrow keys on my keyboard, I am able to uh, move it in very slight increments to the left, right, and up and down. So uh, once I have it aligned, which I think I'm pretty close, do that, maybe a little bit more. There, that's perfect. Okay, sick. Uh, I am going to uh, notice that the shadow on the bottom of mine, yours might be a little bit different, uh, but if I uh, want to line up the bottom of this with that shadow, I'm going to go ahead and lock our uh, render underlay, and uh, we'll go ahead and unlock our sky, and uh, basically just drag those up so that uh, they are in line with one another. And I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, I might go into Photoshop real quick and get rid of this stuff because it doesn't look very ideal. So if I go to uh, my woods render, uh, open it up in Photoshop. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is use the polygonal uh, lasso tool and I'm just gonna basically click and cut out all of the stuff that's not necessary. So like this, we'll just kind of cut around this profile and uh, we can't really see it in this view but there's a lot of grain happening with it. And uh, basically, I want to cut off everything on the left side of the screen and just hit delete. So if I control S on that in Illustrator, it should be just fine. So now we're starting to get pretty, pretty Libius Woodsy. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unlock our sky or render underlay layer rather. And I'm going to make it maybe like 50% just so that we can still have the shadows, but uh, we can uh, give it kind of these different colors. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide this layer and uh, select all of this line work yet again by simply clicking and dragging. And uh, what I'm going to do is make a new layer, uh, pay attention to this part, do object, live paint, make, edit, copy, edit, undo, edit, paste in place. And then I'm going to drag it to that new layer. So. Uh, Basically, I'm going to drag it underneath our render underlay, and we'll call it white underlay. You'll notice that uh, when we have this render underlay here that we're actually able to see the background image, which is not ideal because obviously his are opaque in his. So we will uh, go ahead and uh, fill this in with white by hiding all of these uh, and basically switching those fill colors and making it white. And uh, we're just left with kind of the white silhouette of the object. So uh, I think that starts to get a little bit softer and uh, it looks a little bit better. You can keep the line work if you want. I would recommend keeping it uh, simply because uh, you can start to see some of the panelization that Lebius Woods does over here. I'm actually going to turn up the shadows a little bit harsher, something like that. I think that looks a little bit better. And uh, what we're going to do from here is what we did in the hand-drawn effects tutorial that I sent you uh, a while back. Basically, if I uh, have my uh, white underlay, I'm going to go ahead and edit, copy it, and edit, paste it in place, and then put it on a new layer real quick. We're going to delete this so it's not uh, super important to name the layer or anything. I'm going to hide everything except for that layer uh, and turn on the line work by typing in like 0.5. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is uh, use my fill color on the uh, paint bucket tool to basically click like, I don't know, checkerboard patterns or areas that you want to fill in with that kind of colored pencil effect that Lebius Woods has uh, going on in his original image. And uh, the way I, I'm doing it kind of randomly, you can of course uh, spend more time figuring out what you want to do and, and how you want to fill it in. Uh, but I'm going to fast forward through this really quick uh, and basically make sure that not too many of these things are touching one another. Uh, again, I want to kind of go for a checkerboard effect that I'll be able to manipulate very easily in Photoshop. Okay, so once I have everything filled in, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the line work by simply clicking the stroke and hitting none. Uh, and I'm going to do file, export, export as, uh, and we'll call it, yeah, L Lebius LW Convert, it's fine. Uh, we're going to export it as a PNG that we can open up in Photoshop. Uh, and at this point, we can do what we did in the first tutorial where we use the magic wand to basically select one color 
uh, select similar colors, make a new layer, let's call it colored pencil red. And uh, basically, uh, if, you, if you don't know the specifics on this tutorial, please go back to that other one because I don't want to recover everything that I'm doing. But basically, uh, I'm, I'm grabbing all of the similar colors and then going to a brush that has a colored pencil effect uh, and then simply making sure my opacity is at 50% and filling some of that stuff in. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part as well. Okay, so once we have everything filled in, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn off uh, kind of our reference layer and then our, our white layer on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and do File, uh, Save As, uh, Libius Woods, LW, Converted, that's fine. We'll go ahead, well we don't want to overwrite it, we'll call it Converted 2. And uh, from there we are going to place it back into Illustrator, we can get rid of this, uh, by going above our render underlay and uh, making it called color underlay and doing a simple file place and placing that image that we just made. So this one should match up exactly with the line work because uh, we exported it as a PNG from Illustrator and it should be the exact size, which it is. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this down to like, I don't know, maybe 50% or 35%, maybe something more subtle. Uh, and just kind of play with those settings until I get something that I'm, I'm kind of happy with. Uh, and then uh, let's try to put it below the render underlay. That kind of dampens it down quite a bit. Uh, but if I put that at like 50%, I think that's a little bit better because it starts to show some of these harsher shadows that are taking place inside this drawing. Uh, and I think I'm going to leave it like that. So. Uh, the last couple of things that we want to do are get some line work in there and get this kind of tiling effect going on. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, making a new layer. We're going to put the, the, the tiling at the very top. We'll call it tiling. Uh, and uh, you, you'll notice that Lebius Woods kind of takes bites out of stuff. So actually, we should probably go back to the sky layer and uh, make sure that's the only thing unlocked. And uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the drop shadow that we gave it. And uh, let's go ahead and do, uh, we'll go to the pen tool uh, and basically just kind of click the outline that we want. So if we do something like this and then we click on the next point somewhere over here so we kind of get that chunk taken out of it. We go up, over to the right, all the way down, back over. And that should give us a complete uh, line. What we can do is select that and the image below and simply hit Control-7 or Object uh, Clipping Mask Make. And that'll get rid of uh, what we had going on over there. Uh, actually, go ahead and hit Control-Z and make a copy of this, of this pen line that we just made by going to Edit Copy. Uh, and then uh, you can do Edit, Redo, Clear. Or sorry, uh, do the clipping mask again, Control-7. Uh, and then if we do Edit, Paste, and Place, we can maintain that profile, we can send it to the back, we can make it a 10 point font, and we can give it an effect, we can blur it, and we can do Gaussian blur, and we'll make it, I don't know, 10 pixels. Uh, let's do five, actually look a little bit better. And then we'll make it 75% opacity again. And now we start to get some of that kind of depth and, and texture going on. So uh, now going back to the tiling, basically what I'm gonna do is, uh, go to my line tool right here, hit uh, the, the backslash on, on my keyboard, uh, and basically just kind of uh, fill in uh, all of this area with, actually let's go to the rectangle tool for this one. We'll do something like this. We'll do something like, we'll make it one point font just so it's easier to deal with. We'll do one like this. We'll do one that goes from here to, I guess all the way is fine. Uh, and then we will make a couple along the bottom. So one like this, one like this, and one like this. They don't have to be exact, just uh, as long as they're pretty close. And what I'm going to do is, uh, let's say that these two we want to remain the same, so we'll delete those two. Uh, but we want this one to be darker and we want this one to be darker. We'll simply fill the uh, switch the fill and stroke. And if we want these two to be lighter, we'll simply uh, switch the fill and stroke and then make it white. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and set the transparency of all of these things to uh, like 10%. And you can kind of play around with what looks right. But basically we start to get that kind of uh, uh, tiled effect like Lebius Woods does. So I think I'm gonna put mine down at like 20 maybe. And I think that starts to read kind of nice. Uh, so from here, uh, all we need to really do is kind of add some of this extraneous line work. And there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either make like new kind of make 2D views in Rhino and bring in an Illustrator. What I'm going to do for this tutorial is actually just uh, unlock kind of all of our, our, our line work that we have going on here. And uh, I'm basically just going to like stretch it and, and skew it. So if I do uh, edit copy uh, and then make a new layer, edit paste in place. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and live paint this and we'll go ahead and make it like, uh, I think 0.5 should be fine. Let's go ahead and make the stroke white and uh, we will put that on our new layer called random LW, random line work. And we'll kind of drag it off to the side and see what we're dealing with. So uh, it's a little bit thin. We might actually wanna make it like a one point font. And uh, I'm actually just going to kind of like skew it like this, kind of using the directional arrows and, and rotating it like this and kind of getting it to fit wherever on the composition you think it makes the most sense. Uh, and I actually want to make a couple of copies of it. So you'll see there's like this uh, kind of instance of shadowing going on. If I uh, go ahead and uh, make this, I'm going to make it like 0.5. I think it did look better that way, actually, once I'm up close to it. If I do edit copy, edit, paste in place, and just drag it down to the side like this a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and change the stroke color to, let's say, uh, 175, and uh, go ahead and send that object to the back, and basically that'll give us a kind of fake uh, shadow going on. That's a little bit too light, so let's make it 75 instead. Uh, and I think that starts to read a little bit better. Again, we can go back to our effect uh, blur, Gaussian blur and do something more like that. Uh, but again, this is just kind of something that you should be playing around with and seeing what works best. So I think that starts to read a little bit better. Uh, if we wanna have kind of like this Thunderbolt thing going through it, we can do that by simply going back to our pen tool and uh, doing something like this. You just click on a couple of points. Uh, actually, I don't like what I just did. So let's do something more like this. And uh, if I click off of it and then click back onto it, I can make it like a f whatever five point font. We can make it that really bright red. And if I do edit copy, edit paste in place, I'm actually just gonna rotate this one a little bit to give it the shadow. Line it up like that, make it black, make it 75%, give it a uh, blur. And uh, I think that's looking pretty good. So uh, I'm just going to kind of fill in the rest of, of this page with some more kind of random stuff like that. But this should be the Lebius Woods tutorial. Uh, I know it's a lot of information, so, so feel free to ask questions. Uh, actually, one more thing that I might cover just very fast. You can see that there's like a point on this side and an arrow on this end. We can actually adjust that by going to select these two things, going to stroke, uh, the arrowheads, we can make it like, I like arrow nine, arrow nine is quite nice. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and flip the direction because I want the arrows to be over there. And on this point, I just want it to be uh, some kind of base like this. Uh, and I'm going to put that scale down a lot, something like uh, maybe 50%. Okay, and then I might actually do the same thing for kind of this upper guy right here, do it like 75% size. So I'm going to go ahead and keep filling in my drawing with stuff like that. Uh, but if you have any questions, please reach out and ask to me. Uh, please reach out to me and ask, rather. And uh, uh, again, we don't expect to have this done by Wednesday, but we certainly want to get a pretty good start on it by that time. So uh, until next time.